Welcome to another episode of Sync Riffs. Thanks so much for joining us. And we have a special guest in the studio. Really stoked to be uh, chatting with Dave Green from the Filthy Souls. How's it going, Dave? I'm very good. I'm glad to be here. We have history and I'll, I'll, I'll kind of set up the stage uh, before yeah, I jump. We do. Yeah. Probably um, 15 years almost, I reckon. Yeah. Oh, man. Time flies. I've got the gray to uh, to show yeah. to play. <laughs> now, like, I'm showing my age. It's like 15 years, but that's okay. That's all good. Yeah, no, no. So um, first work with Dave back in, and you'll have to correct me on the dates, but when Dave was solo, he was in, still in England, and we had synced one of his songs in a show called Vanished. And then fast forward about... Oh, Four or five years later, we ran into each other at the British Consulate at a, yeah. at a music conf. He's been here ever since, ha is no uh, stranger to the sync space, has a huge body of work that he can talk about. And you wanted to have him on tonight to talk about his journey, his arc from indie artist to label on the label side, and then now stateside doing living the dream working his pitching his own songs and working with agents like blue buddha with some great success so with that i turn the mic over to uh dave green hello it's good to be good to be here um yeah it's mad i think the first time the first sync we got was 2007 and it was on the tv show called vanished which i remember it was like back in the day. I don't even know how we got in touch with each other, but I remember just getting an email from you and saying like, hey, I've got this song on this TV show. Can I use it? It was Shelter and it was like $1,000 or something. I was like, you can make money from TV. It's like, this is crazy. So I was super excited, but yeah. And then that's kind of where it all started. It is exactly where it started because it was my first ever one. And then uh, put my stuff on MySpace, changed the band name, got band members. And then a PR person heard it on MySpace and said, do you ever th thought about coming to LA? And I was like, no, not really. Didn't think much of it. About six months later, a friend of mine, Will, who works for A&G Sync in the UK, you probably know them. Mm -hmm. um, he said, to, which is funny because he even went into Sync too. Um, but he was my manager at the time and he said, uh, I was like, oh, we should go to New York. It'd be cool to go there and play. And he was like, New York's going to be cold. He's like, let's not go there. Let's go to LA. And he goes, do you know anyone in LA? And I was like, well, actually, this woman's been messaging me from, her name's Siri Garber. She's a great friend mm -hmm. and uh, still one of my really close friends. And uh, I said that she, you know, this, this Siri had messaged me on MySpace saying, come to LA. And he was like, right, let's message her now. So we did that night, woke up the day after, and she was like, yeah, sure, I'll put you in touch with some people. Mm -hmm. You, uh, She was like, my best friend's a music manager. Um, and then his name's Brian Klein, still a great friend of mine. And then uh, that was that. And then we ended up coming over. Brian organized a tour, mm -hmm. came over for three months, decided that England was too cold. And I was like, I, I remember I came back from L.A., and we toured up and down the West Coast. And I remember just being like, when I got back to England, I was like really not depressed, but I was down. You know, mm -hmm. I was like, oh man, I don't feel like being back here. And then um, my mom and dad were kind of like, why do you go out there and do that? It seems like mm -hmm. everything you're doing is leading you that way. So you might as well carry on. So came hey, back, left the rain for the sunshine, yeah. fell in love with it. Mm -hmm. uh slept on lots of couches had no money and just wrote it out and then you know 13 years later um there's been a lot along the way so many ups and downs and like you said signed to labels dropped from labels made out and led me to like doing sync music uh I've, I've consistently done that throughout because it's been a great way to earn money mm -hmm. um and still be able to be creative and do something that uh, is in music and not just like working at Ralph's or something, you know? Um, yeah. Yeah. And then that's it. And now I'm here. I just got married. That's cool. Yeah. <laughs> She's great. I love you. Send her a message. <laughs> yeah. Congrats. 
No, that's amazing. I mean, it's giant San Pellegrino. Yes, San Pellegrino got the water for the late night uh, <laughs> yeah. podcast. So it's interesting because when you're on the label side, um, if you could redo it all over again, so to speak, turn the tr turn the time back in the time capsule. You know, I'm sure you wouldn't trade it in the world because I know you you were gigging and those spaces. But on the sync side, did the label they had their sync departments and they'd secure syncs for you, and you were less hands on in that regard? It was kind of the opposite, and I feel bad for saying this because the label wasn't it wasn't a bad label. It was great, you know. We had good times, and they, you know, put a lot of money into what I was doing and committed a lot of time. If I could change anything, I would probably not be as stubborn as a person. Uh, I was very like, this is my way and I, I know best kind of thing. And bearing in mind, I was like literally 23, thinking I knew everything, you know? Right. I was like, what do you know? The guy's like, dude, I produced no doubt. I'm like, all right, maybe you know something. <laughs> all right, apart from that. <laughs> but um, yes. Uh, if I could do anything different, I would probably not be as stubborn. I would be more open-minded to different things. Mm -hmm. And the label, actually, when I got signed to the label, that's when I didn't sync for a period of time because they weren't pushing it to making an album and getting it out to radio. So mm -hmm. there was no really, like, TV. Uh, there was nothing really that was uh, – they didn't really want to sync. So yeah. I was doing a lot. Then for three years – not much at all. One Bose, Bose commercial, and that was it. <laughs> and then, um, yeah. And then, yeah, that's what I was saying. <laughs> Just not be yeah. stubborn. I'd be more open minded. And, <laughs> and I'd say, let's get some songs on TV. It's, yeah, it was, it was good, though. <laughs> no, it's interesting because, you know, I started in the space in 2002. And, you know, the, the, the template back then was getting in a show in like the OC, Grey's Anatomy. Yeah. And fast forward 20 years now, as you know, I mean, there's, it, there's no, it's, there's not a scarcity of music. There's too much. And it, nowadays getting a sync, it's, it's like winning a lottery some days, you know, it's. Yeah. It's, it's pretty yeah. wild, man. It's like, mm. that is, it's, I feel like back in the day, you used to just make an album and mm -hmm. you give it to your sync agent and they would put it on something and you knew the music supervisor and you could get it done that way. <laughs> then everyone got wise that I was making lots of money and started going, let's make fake projects up. Let's do this. Let's do that. And mm -hmm. let's make these songs that are like two and a half minute, like in your face. And then right. all the music supervisors seem to get wise to that and go, you know, that's fine for some TV shows, um, but um, they all seem to get wise to it. And now I feel like it's going back just from what I've been learning from my friend who just came from England. Mm -hmm. uh, he was just like, every, they're just looking for artist stuff again now. Right? Come on, come on. I'm a bad girl. Come on. You know, like some. Yeah, they don't like it. Like That's good for some stuff, but I feel right. like. Now and now it just seems like everyone's going towards the the artist thing again, which is amazing. So yeah, yeah, I would tell well, anyone doing it to to just be true to yourself. Don't try and follow the trend because you're never going to catch the trend. Yeah, <laughs> right there, authenticity and to thread the needle. Small world. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, we were on a uh, panel called Get Repped, and if I'm not mistaken, Will was on one of the earlier panels. He was yeah, yeah. And, I tuned in and then and, and his name sounded so familiar. So now that that's come full circle and that sentiment. Yeah. yeah. He actually, uh, that was, he just got to my house actually. And he was staying here. He left yesterday, but <sighs> yeah, he was saying, he, he said that to me. He's like, Oh, I just did this panel thing. And then I saw you post something and I was like, Oh, I wonder if they saw each other on there or whatever. And you, there it is. But he was, yeah. he's a good dude. Love him. Yeah. No, you, you know, and what you said to, to your point, there's been a backlash. Supers are now, you know, authenticity 100%. And, you know, I think your tracks like, you know, boys will be out for a fight, living a good life, um, unlucky. You know, you just, you have timeless tracks and, you know, the hook. And, you know, I'm, I'm 
I grew up in the in the in the eighties, but if I in another life I would be on my my Vespa in England in the sixties, you know. So yeah. I, that's why I really resonated with your, you know, when when we I first came across your music when you were solo. Mm -hmm. And um yeah. yeah, that's funny, man, because that's like <laughs> That was the music that I, my, my dad and my brother and my mum, they were all like, they would always play like the mod music, you know, the who and like, I, I actually had a Vespa in college and a big fishtail parker. So that was cool. It was really, it was amazing in summertime because you could cruise around, but mm -hmm. winter time in England with the rain and I came off it quite a lot, but yeah, the Vespa. Was <laughs> hey, cool. Yeah. And no, to be, to be precise. Wigan, where you originally just outside of Manchester, correct? Is it? Yeah, Wigan. Yeah, <laughs> Wigan. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. uh, you got Manchester, Liverpool, and it's like slap bang right in the middle, so you can get to either within thirty minutes. So it's quite good. You get two cities in one, I like close, so it's good. You know, back when it was, um, you know, songs from Oasis that, like you said, you know the hook and the chorus where it's like you're at a soccer match and that rallying, you know, the Oasis songs that you can sing to, you know, yeah. or kind of that formula where people would write sync, sync friendly songs that are, you know, it's just to a formula, but like you said, it doesn't have real soul to it. Cause it's, it's just, it's formulaic. Yeah. Um, it is like that. That's why Oasis is still amazing. You know, if you listen to the music, um the verve too they're really good as well great great band um and do you know what i do my choruses and that um i basically i like write when i'm in the shower which is like i think i think about like all right well you know i'll pick a subject or whatever this is you know for not just sync stuff this is for you know artist stuff too because I, I i've got a home studio you can see kind of a little bit of it um and, you know, we have artists coming through all the time. So it's like, you know, you pick, what's your week like? What have you been up to? What have you been thinking about? Have you had a breakup? Have you, you know, had a great week? You know what I mean? It might be good. Tell me something like, and, uh, you know, pick a subject about it. And most of the time in the shower before the, before the sessions, I'm like, all right, what should we do today? And like, you know, there's like a song last week. It was like, turn back the hands of time, like thinking about your past, what you could do. And then um, changes, you know, like in your life, like what's been a good thing, like a good change, you know, like I just got married. That's a good change. So like talk about something like that. But if you if people want a bit of advice, I would just say try not to be too descriptive about this because that you now you've just got 50 percent chance of getting a, a song in a night scene because you said about the day or vice versa. Um. You know, don't make it too, like, you can talk about love, but don't necessarily talk about the, like, a p specific thing. Make it so it could be, like, I love this amp, which is right here. Oh, I, <laughs> these are just the things that I've learned from making many, many, many songs and making, thinking, I've got this brief, this is the one, man. And then they're like, nah, you're talking about oranges and we wanted apples, man. <laughs> That's just, that's a bad example, but you know, hopefully the people listening understand what I mean. Like try and just be not vague, but just not too descriptive about the situation. Unless it's, you know, unless it's an artist thing, then, you know, I take all that back and just do whatever you feel in your heart. And like, if it's good music, it will fit somewhere. Don't just don't chase the sink. That's what I'd say. Briefs are really hard. <laughs> yeah, because, let's, let's, yeah. You think you're going to get it, and then you realize, oh, hang on a minute. They've sent this out to probably 100 people. <laughs> and mm -hmm. I I think you might have posted something about this, actually. But it's like, how can me writing a song within 12 hours compete with a song that has taken somebody, say, two weeks? It's been mm -hmm. professionally mixed. It's been all this stuff. How could it, like... How is it possible? Like the song might be as good, but like you're talking like a B plus mix versus an A plus mix. And like, mm. you know, the turnaround is so hard for briefs because they're like, we need this by 9 a.m. tomorrow. And then like sometimes I've been in the studio and I have a, a producer partner, Matt, and I'm like, come on, man, we can do it. And he's like, 
nah. <laughs> you can't, can't turn around a Bruno Mars hit in just like five hours. Mm-hmm. You got to go to bed as well, you know. So <laughs> exactly. Um, but it is hard. Yeah, you know, that's just I don't want to turn anybody off from doing it, but I just say like, you know, I suppose I'm here to inspire people to want to do sync, but the more people I inspire, the more they <laughs> take the job away from me. <laughs> Just don't do it. <laughs> right. No, it's yeah. No, you you're spot on there. Be realistic. You know, keep your my advice to you know artists that come through. You know, because they'll call us, like you said, and if we we give them a brief, and sometimes we're playing detective on the briefs because not all the info's there. We don't have a reference track, and then it it requires yeah. using our imagination and what what do we interpret? And it's so subjective. And what I always say is, you know, best. Like you said, Dave, best song wins for the scene. Does it sync to picture perfectly? Yeah. yeah. So, but yeah, I you know I did a song for this film, Blues Clues. It was like, and you know we went through all this thing, and I thought the song was amazing, man. Like it was so good. Um, it was just really sad because like it literally seemed so perfect with the scene to me. But, you know, they obviously had different plans, so it then ends up like getting lost. And I'm like, it's yeah. sad because the song is so in my opinion, mm-hmm. you know, I think it's really good. And I'm like, it's a shame that I'll never get heard because it was so made for that thing. You know what I mean? Like, it's like, you know, you're talking about the actual character in it and the scene and everything. And like, yeah. so yeah, sometimes you get those in sync and you're like disappointed. Cause you're like, well, I thought that was really good, but. And you then know. have you ever, I'm sure Dave, you've done the, and then you see what they really used. And, but sometimes, like you say, you don't have the benefit of cutting the picture. It's, you're, you're just seeing the words on the paper. Yeah. We, uh, I don't know if I could probably talk about it. It doesn't really matter. It's already gone, gone, gone out at the moment. But um, it was probably like two years ago. I got a call from a producer and he said, um, hey, man, you want to work on the new Top Gun movie? So obviously I said, hell yeah, brother. <laughs> I say, I'm like, of course I do. So we ended up getting together and we uh-huh. did this song and I thought it was amazing. I was like, you know, it was to the scene, it was super 80s, like Kenny Loggins throwback. Like that's what they asked for in the brief. Anyway, mm-hmm. so we made it, you know, we saw the scene, all that stuff, like, like a very early version of it. And then um, basically, I watched the movie and it was One Republic. I am worried about it right now. I'm like, not 80s whatsoever. Like, sounds more like a 2000s hit of like, you know, the, it's like that kind of thing. And I was like, they didn't tell me that. They said, <laughs> Kenny Loggins 80s. I'm like, so, well, you know what I mean? Like you said, the best song for the picture wins, but, you know, but it is super disappointing. Cause again, once another song like that, I was like, man, this is cool. Like, this is a good track. Which I have, it's good because that one I was able to submit for something else too. So, no, exactly. So, two points to your point. And I think, you know, whatever tracks you have laying around in the hard drive, I'll, I'll next time when we link up in person, I'll be getting those tracks that, you know, haven't seen the light of day. And like you said, yeah. it's for something else. And then to book in yeah. what, you, what you just said is creatively, sometimes things will, ch- they won't tell you until the, Oh, like, oh, we went with uh, One Republic because the creative direction changed and what we use. Yeah. The, the, the funniest one that I did, um, I did uh, an X-Men Dark Phoenix trailer. And uh-huh. I did it with, um, with as a, he's one of my best friends. He is my best pal. I love him. I have like 10 best friends. <laughs> <laughs> um but he uh, he's from Think Up Anger. That's his his handle on if anyone wants to check him out. He's done everything. He's uh, <laughs> named Larry Granite. He's a beast. And um, we did the Dark Phoenix trailer. I and mean, it was funny because I was in England walking down the beach. And he goes, um, I think we've got the Dark Phoenix trailer. I was like, oh, f- amazing. He goes, I don't know for sure, though. We're going <laughs> to find out. It's going to be premiered on the James Corden show. And we'll only find out tomorrow. So I was like going to bed, like, this is a huge thing. Like, you know, we're on a blockbuster movie trailer, you singing, like, and I woke phone straight away and he's like, we got it. So I'm like, yeah, (laughs) but they didn't even tell us until it was like premiere because they're trying to keep it hush. So like, you know, Mm -hmm. nobody 
nobody knows the reveal but even the people who did the music for it they didn't tell you know so it's an odd odd game yeah i did um the i'm just talking about all i suppose that's why i'm here isn't it Talk about <laughs> myself and sinks um yeah. but yeah the um i just did city confidential uh on a and e the new uh new tr true crime and i did the last season uh the theme song so it's like the, the the intro music and the outro music i did that and then um just got season two renewed again and same song but the uh we didn't know about that until it was on tv you know so mm -hmm. like they didn't tell us about that either i'm like do we get it or not so that was with larry too i'm just looking at my battery here i hope it doesn't die okay. <laughs> yeah. but yeah i can also plug it in no worries no worries no, true yeah. crime. Yeah, well, well, I'll have to get more tracks from you on that note because I think yeah. you know, we, we actually recently got a true crime track as well in that vein. But uh, yeah, and that's that's the thing is, you know, out of post pandemic, you know, Netflix, Hulu, all the streamers, there's a you know, there's twenty four seven we're working. People always ask us, you know, when when you know two thousand two, the traditional TV season was you know spring or rather mm -hmm. the winter season after uh fall season and now i mean there's content all the time and what about yeah. video games um had you had you uh ever written any custom pieces for, for uh, video yeah, games i did i did um mobile legends um that's just right. kind of i think uh, it's really bad this because i got the <laughs> if you go on the game i'm the lobby music so like when you like picking your character or whatever I'm the person who's singing that song. So it's, and it's literally on repeat. So, but, um, I think it's league of legends. It's called mobile legends. I think it's like kind of a spin off from that. So I feel bad if it's not, and I'm sorry to league of Legends. I mean, <laughs> you know, it's called, yeah. Mobile legends. Bang, bang. V2 is the one I did. Nice. And, uh, it's funny because they they had me do a music video for it too, and I had really short hair, and it was and they spiked it up all like, and everybody on the captions. It's funny if you want to look at it. Yeah, so yeah people yeah. are commenting on it, and they're like, they did my hair like that. So <laughs> like, I didn't know Gordon Ramsay could sing. <laughs> like, wow, the chef's really good. <laughs> That's not nice. I like Gordon Ramsay, come on. He's not a bad looking dude, but like I don't, don't really look like Gordon Ramsay, but I, I suppose in the video I do, but it's the hair. But yeah. They dyed, they dyed your hair blonde as well. Yeah, it was just it was a probably like a year and a half ago, so it was really short. Now I've got my hair's long. But, yeah. Yeah. But there you go. Yeah, I did that video game. Um Yeah, I done like lots of different things. And then for Filthy, Filthy Souls, I know you have a new single out, Dancing at the Bottom. Uh -huh. Sound-wise, it's a would you correct? It's a departure from the traditional sound of Filthy Souls. Yeah, um, it is. It's got more of a Motown thing. There's that, and then the other one that I put out, Hold On to Your Love. Mm -hmm. uh, they were co-written uh, with Zach Wisnitzer and Matt. Wiggers, who's like my the, my two besties. We actually have a project called Thomas Allen Place. Uh, it's like yeah, it's on Instagram and like we've done in, we've done two albums, but one's out and one's gonna come out. Um, but yeah, I, I it was like the first I've I've co-written with Matt like a lot, but it was the first time that I've like full on like had somebody else involved as much. You know what I mean? Like. Mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. There's a lot, of, obviously, like I was, there's a lot of songs that I've worked with different people, but um, yeah, it's a different sound. <laughs> it's yeah. not rock, it's more like Motown y. And it's just because, like, I want to try something new. Yeah, no, the love next it. Song I put out will probably be something else. So I did, mm -hmm. you know, if anyone's watching this show, the theme song to this show, Matthew <laughs> Tiger. It's in the credits. Check the link. So it's Flying Tiger by Magic Tiger. Yeah. And the vocalist. So you want to, yeah. That, it's um, when did Magic Tiger form? And, and, and the lead vocalist is Cat. So yeah, Cat Mayo's is like, 
uh her, it's funny because she's like everyone it's like her literal name is emmy o's z z whatever <laughs> so it's like cat meows <laughs> which is funny uh-huh. uh she would laugh at that but um <laughs> yeah so we got in touch with her through a friend and i was looking for a female vocalist to do some stuff with and um i had like a bunch of these ideas mm-hmm. but anyway um she came into the studio and, went, and we were like, this is actually pretty good. She's got a great voice. She's kind of like Alanis Morissette type thing, but it's yeah. like good over like pop stuff. Um, when I was actually writing a Filthy Souls single, which, which is the, it was one featuring her. That's what the point of it was. And then that song, like the, the themes to this, um, mm-hmm. Lion Tiger. <laughs> Kind of like started as like a bit of fun. I just had that synth down, 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 down. I was just having a bit of fun with that. Uh-huh. And um, yeah, so I played it to her in the studio, and she was like, "Yeah, that's amazing." And then there was another song called "Down Like a Hammer," which was mm-hmm. on Velma recently, and that came mm-hmm. about just because we were just having a bit of fun. And um, I rap on that one song. <laughs> it's just funny. That, that's that's really- me rapping. Yes, yes, but I do a British rap, and I really? like. Yeah, what does I say? Um, what is it? I've got an ice cold heart, like an igloo. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't have it in the air. <laughs> I feel like also ran your voice through not a vocoder, but there's some of. I mean, yeah, when you're rapping, uh, at first I'm like, is this? I thought it was. You're fully emulating the streets. I mean, it was the Cockney really came out in the rap. It was just like because when I was, I was, I just wanted to be like very British. So I was like, I walk like, I talk like. You know what I mean? I got an old ice cold heart like a nigg blue. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's fine. You know what I mean? We have a good time doing it, and um, there's like a bunch of little secret things we put in there in the back of vocals that are like are little messages that we reversed so if you reverse the song you'll hear what it does <laughs> yeah we just yeah. like had fun. like all the background noises like, mm-hmm. like that was inspired by the um you know the pharrell so it's kind of like that it's like we're like is it too close I'm like nah it's just we don't say snoop you know what i mean it's good right. but, yeah no, I yeah, think nice. inspiration from different things, you know. So, mm-hmm. yeah, it's all right. And that, that, that's what I love about working with you because, you know, Filthy Souls covers one lane, Magic Tiger another, mm. and then there's another project. And and that's that's one part of in with Sync covering all the bases. Because, as you know, one day I'm getting a hip hop request, an electronic singer songwriter. Yeah. And, you know, as a sync agent, I got to have all the, all the, you know, the more, more tools in the toolkit we can turn to. And you're great, Dave, because you'll be like, Hey, what are, you know, is there a brief on, and then yeah, ebb and flow. And yeah. Yeah. I, uh, the filthy souls is always just me singing. That's that thing. Um, magic tiger was, it is, we're still doing music. We've got some more stuff. Um, that's me, Kat, Matt and Zach. <laughs> And then we we do that together, mm-hmm. and then Rebel Hearts Club is another one that I have um, my two friends Addison and Ray, mm-hmm. and because we all sing, we all sing on that stuff. So it's kind of like, you know, that's more pop orientated. Um, Incredible. Yeah, that's all sorts of everything. Then I do trailer stuff, which is me, and um, I've been really enjoying uh, recently writing for artists. That's what I've been doing. I was at a writing camp today downtown um doing some korean pop music which is cool ah yeah it's something different you know and um i've never done that before so it's like nice to try something new mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah it's all good it's all rocking and rolling no and with rebel hearts uh club you guys had a track in the in kung in the cw's kung fu show i think last season yeah, that was like a month or two ago. And then we've got uh, Shining Veil, which is a Courtney Cox TV show. That's coming out. We've got that. Nice. Got a couple of Teen Moms coming out. Got American Idol, Selling mm-hmm. Sunset, Selling the OC. Um, what was mm-hmm. that? Hour One. We got Vape. Yeah. 
yeah which is gonna be on netflix and uh that's that's you can hear me rap <laughs> <laughs> indeed and and that's a you know so documentary about vaping the brief came through and they're like we need a cool hip song that 13 to 17 year olds could be listening to and they're vaping out and your track <laughs> checked off all the boxes so that's one of those ones like yeah. you said you know right time right place timing and you know yeah. being authentic having that sound because you know back when i dj'd and i would play the clubs i'm like i could hear this in a club setting and that's why yeah. your, your track i really vibe with for the theme song to sing yeah up. thanks man yeah man so uh, uh that song because it's like i think it worked for the vape thing as well because the line the lyric is I'm going up, up, up in the air. So it's like kind of like, it's funny. I don't even like, I sound bad by saying this, but I don't even think we went into it thinking anything. We weren't like, let's write a song about this. It was more like, let's be ridiculous and see how far we can push this. Uh, that's why I rap on it. That's why it says riding tigers through the air. Cause we are like, whatever. <laughs> yeah, no, no. I love that. Cause it's, you know, and then, just to thread the needle for a lot of folks who don't know, but then with constraints, uh, standards and practices, you know, we have a list of, so songs that are too explicit about guns, Jesus, Yeah, you know, you know, they, they update stuff from time to time. So if you're talking about an Uzi or an AK, nope, you know, obviously in yeah. general lyrics, so to speak, not too specific on the nose. And uh, obviously profanity, it's interesting for HBO Showtime cable shows, you know, we can get away with, with profane lyrics, but traditional TV, obviously we need a clean mix. But mm -hmm. uh, yeah, man, no, it's been, um, man, you covered all the bases. You're, you're killing it. <laughs> I'm you know what? It's like, just, I want, I want everyone to know that like, it might seem like I'm absolutely smashing. Uh, I've had a lot of success. It's been great for me. It is a really tough road. You have to work really hard. I record every single day. Um, I'm very lucky to know Charles. So if you're watching this and you don't work with Charles and you've got good tunes, send them to him and he'll help you out. He's been great to me. But it's difficult, but just stick with it. Uh, that's all I'd say because, you know, like even though it might seem like, oh, man, he's killing it. I've had so many ups and downs and round and rounds that, like, it's yeah it's a tough road but be strong and if anyone wants to work with me as well feel free to send me a dm it's cool like i'll happily work with you and you can come to the studio and we can make some stuff and i've got like 20 guitars I've got drums we got upright piano I've got some whatnot so yeah that's it just thanks for having me man yeah no thanks for I mean, the song absolutely and i'm gonna you know if the invites are between you know, meeting up in person and having a pint, I'll be coming by the studio and we'll, and we'll do, we'll do a pitch. I'll, I'll, I'll break out the pitch log and uh, we'll yes. uh, re reverse engineer some tracks. That would be insane. I'd love that. Um, we do writing camps over here as well mm -hmm. at the house. So, you know, if anyone's interested in joining with that too, feel free. Like I said, DM me or whatever. You can email me. Uh, whatever you want, whatever you want. I'm free. Yeah. I'm, I'm here to work. And um, yeah, thanks. It'll, it'll be great. And also, we would love to have Cat and um, everyone from Magic Tiger in a future episode. Yeah. See what's yeah. going on with future tracks. She's uh, she's great. She's super talented. You should check her out. Cat Mayo's anyone who's watching. She's got her own thing too, and she's kind of this rock Alanis Morissette badass girl. She's a beast. I love her, but. Yeah, it's all good. <laughs> Thanks for having me. No, no, absolutely, Dave. Been been a pleasure, and looking forward to having you back next time. And thanks yeah. everyone for tuning in. And um, yeah, man. Well, uh, next time we'll play some more tracks, and I'll put uh, Dave's info and Filthy Souls info in the link. And until next time, Namaste. Catch you guys on the other side. Thank you so much, and uh, we'll catch you on, on the other side. Peace. Thank you. Bye bye. <laughs> Go.